actually <clears throat> this is built by Al uh, let me go here and Yeah, so this guy, Alexandru N, made this. How can I control my. Oh, sure, here. Okay, so now I don't hear myself. Uh, this guy made this <coughs> series of four episodes and doing a ship 8 emulate and it's very good material so I I was thinking about starting streaming something and I really like to learn more about the Rust language so I thought to be a nice project to build an emulator but as Alexandro and Arad did this series of chip 8 and he completed in the latest episode he, we actually see the gaming running so I, I, I thought why not build <laughs> if you see I copied most parts of uh, the way that he's showing because I like we really like so I I I saw his build and his series and I thought that would be nice to build a Game Boy emulator so there is a bunch of uh, emulators are out there uh, and a, a lot of documentations, very good documentations there. I created a, a, a playlist here with some of those videos. So there are two of them that I uh, would like to highlight here. The first one that is very good because it's, uh, it's in Rust from this guy from this Ryan Levick he made this talk and explain uh, the most important parts of the structure of <coughs> Game Boy CPU and how it works it's pretty nice because it's simple the way that his talk it's very short so it's not too long of course there are a lot of a lot more to learn <coughs> from this but this is a good uh, start for understanding how it works so from this uh, talk I get to this other one which is much more deep this is the ultimate game boy talk by <coughs> uh, s what's the name of the guy it is Michael Stare his this guy is like a, a legend He's, this talk is one hour and he gave a lot of information about how the CPU works, how it implements some instructions from Z80 and from the 8080 uh, and other features that's only from the LR35902 which is the CPU used, the real CPU used by <coughs> the Game Boy, uh, the original Game Boy, <coughs> the DMG01. 
so then from these I I discovered this very helpful awesome list you know those awesome lists so there is an awesome Game Boy Dev list which is very very useful because it's uh, yeah you know have a, we have they have a, this discord chat they, which are read, I'm already in and, and there are a lot of people talk about Game Boy development and this is not only for of course not only for building emulators but also for building games for Game Boy yeah so people <clears throat> build games to run on on Game Boy Game Boy emulators or even Game Boy hardware because there is there is this uh, there is this hardware called EverDriver GB that you can even build the EverDrive GB. That you can record, like a start your uh, game there, and you are able to play your game that you developed using the, the instruction set that we go through here in a real hardware. So this is nice. This is very nice. So people here in this. In the Discord chat are also talking about building those 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 games. So this is nice. Uh, <coughs> so from this, uh, a nice uh, this awesome Game Boy development, which is also really awesome. There's a list of documentations uh, and. Uh, any kind of documentation that you you could uh, see in and, and there are those three uh, these three main video series this one is those three is a very nice one I read uh, watch of them I will not spend uh, like a during the streaming to watch the videos but maybe but probably I will do be doing reading in, on the video because I <coughs> I found some uh, two really nice documents from this uh, out this list one is this project called Pi Boy Pro so this guy built this Pi Boy Uh, emulator let me put Chrome. okay so this guy uh, create this so there's also on the score shot here and it's a very good implementation because this is in Python, so yeah, it's you you can learn if you know Python, you can go through this code. And the the most interesting part here, <coughs> which I like it, is this PDF. Uh, I think I read have it open it here. So let me open. Yeah, so this guy is, it's also from University of Copenhagen. Those guys write uh, this <coughs> very detailed uh, document on how they built this 
emulator. And <coughs> also, how this, how, 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 what is the the, the parts of the the actual hardware and so on. So it's something like this this talk, but writing in a very good way. I, I will be re reading this during this stream because I didn't went through all those documents. And there is a there are a lot of others. So we have this instruction set that we will need to implement. I think this series will be like a, a very nice uh, one because I will probably need like a, I don't know. As I said, Alexander did this chip eight in four sessions of two hours. I'm completely sure that I will not be able to do that for doing this. I think I will <coughs> explain the whole month doing this or maybe even more. But I think it will be fun and I will learn a lot in the middle. And as I said, I would like to start a streaming, like live encoding to this become a habit. And oh, there is another thing. I think you can read in my <coughs> if you read in the yeah so let's let's start uh, ah, I want to also highlight one more thing this the official programming manual this is from Nintendo. This, at least here is official programming in hardware by Nintendo. And the good part here, yeah, it's from Nintendo. The very good part here, there are a lot of <coughs> documentations here. But the ni very nice, very good information here is the instruction set. I mean, of course. There is other stuff like sound, which is I I I saw that it's very hard. Display functions it it will be harder hard, but not so hard like sound. I also saw some emulators that do not do sound, so we, I probably struggle with that. But the most part of the an emulator, I mean, yeah, for for building an emulator, you need to at least build the instruction set and be able to handle all the, the instructions that is inside the ROM. So, uh, this uh, chapter, chapter four, or this menu, has all, have all, the description of all uh, instructions. Load, so load the content, contents from register H, register B, from register B, from register A, and so on. And <clears throat> a lot of uh, very good stuff here. So, yeah. I also saw, found this one, but I, I don't. I like this way of showing. I like this way as well. I like this document as well. So, Well, let me also wrap up some parts that I read new, like from this this video. Well, let's start with this. Uh, the Nintendo, the, the Game Boy uh, was launched in 1989 and we, they have uh, all those other versions to the Game Boy Color and also the Game Boy Advance are retro compatible with the Game Boy from 19 from 1989 so 
This Game Boy Advance SP from 2005 is able to play the cartridge from this old guy here. And like the like is uh, <coughs> they said this this game th this machine is very good because it's one of the most uh, or the most platform that stay retro compatible since the beginning till now. So it's very nice. Um, so in uh, so this this video is is very nice. There's a lot of uh, stuff here, like uh, discussing the CPU, the clock because the clock is one megahertz. But the, the guy explained that actually it's com the CPU is four megahertz but the memory it's only one megahertz and every uh, function in CPU is tied to the RAM so it's not able it uses four clocks of the CPU no well four clocks of, of RAM for one clock of the CPU so yeah it's all based in one clock one megahertz and so uh, uh, something s interesting parts that from this video that I I can start off is first the instruction set uh, for the the CPU that the CPU for for Game Boy <coughs> is the core used by Game Boy is this Sharp L LR35901 and it has some uh, instruction part of the instruction set of Intel 8080 and Zilog Z80 as you can see in this it like it's, there are some parts of Intel 8080 that is it's supported by the Game Boy Core. There are some parts of Zilog that's also su supported by Game Boy Core, but there are parts of 8080 that's not, and Zilog it's not. And also there are new features here uh, that is only implemented in this uh, Game Boy Core. But anyway, the most basic stuff that we need to understand here is that well, I need to understand here is that <coughs> this this core uses uh, these ten registers, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Of course, one is the uh, is the PC, the the the, the counter that points in the memory where where is the the program counter <coughs> that points in the memory where so yeah I think we don't need this because we, it's already here so we have this A B C A F A B C D A F H L uh the nice things is that <coughs> this first resistor the, the, the register a is a special one because this is a cumulator it's the only one that could could do uh like mat mathematical stuff like add or something so if you want to add the value from e to D, you need to move the value to from D to A, then s s add A with A E, and then move the result to somewhere else. So every operation <coughs> needs to be done through the accumulator A. Uh, 
So our, our arithmetic, arithmetic and logical operations need to be done here. Uh, so there, the other eight, oh, the other seven, actually eight, the other eight, the other seven has a uh, server as uh, auxiliary registers to the accumulator. And also they could be used as a pair. So each one of these uh, registers are 80, bit, 80 bits, bits. So in there are special ones like BC, D and HL that could be used as a uh, six bit uh, registers. Also, there is the program counter, which is a six bit bits register, and this holds the next uh, address in the memory that CPU is working. So this is the the so every time you go from one point in the memory to another you need to increment this so it's something like like let me just do a file here So it's something like this program counter has this is the 16 bits, which is the address for the next instruction. And also we have this SP, which is also 16-bit, but this is a stack, like it's. <laughs> yeah, it's used for branch the code and goes to one function and get back where you were. So you stack. You build a stack for this. Yeah, this is. <coughs> and also, this there this F uh, register, it's a special one because this is the one that uh, holds the flags for. That which consists in, in six flag in four flags, a very nice uh, explanation about this flag. It is here in this third. It's a very loud. Here. So this. Is, is a video explaining how the code goes and in a, in a this is a simple one just saying to where the flag think it's here yeah it's this one it's explaining so 
when you have this you have when you have a jump instruction from the instruction set you can jump conditionally and this conditional is based on these flags which is stored in the F register register so this holds like the zero flag if the the latest uh, oh, it should be right in here so here Z is set to one when the result of the operation is zero otherwise uh, it's reset so if if it's Z is one it means the latest uh, operation was zero uh, the n is set to one f following following execution of the subtraction instruction. So the latest uh, uh, instruction was a subscription is a, sorry as a subtraction. So this is a, this get one. Eight is set to one when an operation results is carrying from a boring to bit three. And seven set to when the result is occurring from bit 7 and this is better explained here Yeah, so this is comparing if the the it's basically comparing if the the A accumulator remember that this the the first one when doing RHMAC stuff is le uh, less it's smaller than the the oper the other operand. So it's the carrying flag. So with this set of, of flags, you can do instructions like the jump. So you can jump conditionally. If the latest uh, was uh, operation was zero, so N Z goes to so so N Z goes then. It will be like some the instruction set will be something like this. Yeah. So this is a jump directly. So you are you, uh, the instruction saying that you need to jump. So you just place what is in the NN to the program counter, but you also have this where you have a uh, uh, eight bit bits saying where which should be uh, tested. So if CC is zero zero, then it's a in Z. So if it's zero zero, goes to this, or if Z is one, goes to this, and so on. So this is also need to be implement of course need to be implemented in the emulator. <laughs> yeah. So other stuff. Oh, other tools that would help me to to go through this to this adventure would be this uh, a tool called BGB yeah let me put so and also let me
let me open the okay no sound and also I want to open the debugger yeah so let me open it here add this to the No, 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 no. Yeah. No, this is not needed. So, yeah. And yeah, so this is like a let me see if I can increase I think this is good This is not good. Okay. Yeah. So it's basically what it's doing. Basically, what this thing does is. Well, it, there is another screen of this too that to show the game to me. So this is a debugger. But the nice thing is that we go through the instruction in the file. And this is very good to debug. This is the pure uh, hexadecimal from the, the file. So if I come here, open a, a ROM here. So. Let me grab. Of course, if you have the ROM, if I have the original cartridge. Oh, wow, it's not open. Mm. Mm, okay. So this is this is the content of the this is the content of the one ROM file. Uh, this one is Tetris, uh, like you can see here. So <coughs> it basically has like a uh, it's an hexadecimal uh, here. The, of course, this is an hexadecimal file, and this is a nice to 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 go through the instruction set. So, for example, here. Uh, Okay. 
So here. <coughs> So this very first, uh, if you see here, the, the the first byte has something structure, some instruction here, and there is a lot of garbage here, and then more instructions. Go. So this this is probably a jump. Let's see. Oh, jump. So, just to see if it's a jump. Yeah. So, we're going to this. So here we have C3 F B if we see this C three C three is a jump. To specific, but how? <coughs> so now, <coughs> now it starts. How how I should read this file? Because when I read this, it will be. Hit C. It says that it's a jump to zero to eight B zero to eight B. So C three is a jump. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so here this is C, right? So because this is three, right? This is three and this is C because we have like three uh one thousand in hexadecimal. So 12, 12 which is C, 
12, 3. So the sequence is this. C3, C3, and then the lower address. So this is why it, it, it is it, it reversed the order here. Oh, sorry. I am not showing. So as you can see here. So this is the this is the jump instruction. So C three C well twelve three. So C three. You can see here C three, and then this is the lowest part. So another. <coughs> 8 bits, which will be uh, the lower part of the address. So 8B and the higher higher part of the address. 0, 2. So this is nice. <laughs> what what I'm, I'm, I'm learning here is that this debugger transform the instruction which is in Excel small here of course in binary code to a readable instructions readable instruction in assembly so this is a jump so C3 is jump from 0 to 80B so we need to go to this address so now if we go there So, and here it starts the, so this is normally, I think it's because in the beginning of the file, if you see here, there are a lot of junk stuff, which, which I already saw by the other documentation that I read. It's some statically stuff that needs to be here. Like timer, serial, jeep, uh, <coughs> and the fun stuff will start. Zero two. What's the address? Zero two eight p. So here is the first instruction, which is a char, and so on, right? So, <coughs> nice. So now, I think I, at least I understand. Well. Which tools could I use to start learning? Okay. <coughs> so I think a lot of instructions here so Okay, this is a part of the sound register, so let me go to the beginning. Okay. 
Okay, I think I will go through this documentation. It seems to be more like summarized what I need. And probably it's better to start this project. So, emulation will be programmed in Python. So, like, like I mentioned, most of some of those emulation emulators out there do not handle the sound and serial port. Serial port is for doing that link. That link. Well, this is not a Game Boy. This is a old dried, old dried Go, which is a portable emulator made using uh, SP32 microcontroller. Oh. <coughs> Maybe later I want to port this Rust emulator to some microcontroller to see if I can run there, but that's for a far future. <coughs> so, So yeah, uh, <coughs> so at the beginning I think I, this, my project will also not handle the sound because the sound, it seems that is a very tough part, but of course, let's see, let's see how this goes, we are, I'm just be starting, uh, they call this by boy of course because it's paid description how it works and how the emulation fit has been made after the resumation of component B. A section of this section it go through the results of the unit testing. Oh, about victimization. Another stuff that I really like it to learn is how to build, to write emulator stack overflow yeah I found this nice uh, question in stack overflow and this guy made a very good <coughs> idea on how to do that and it explained the basic stuff like the resist uh, registers the program count counter and, and so on and also one uh, important stuff when I started researching about emulator was because it says about optimization here what we mostly will be doing is interpret interpretation so we will interpret the the assemble assembly uh, codes like the instruction set and interpret and, and perform the action <clears throat> but there are other two uh, type of uh, way, other two ways of handling processor emulations which is dynamic recompilation and static recompilation it's explained that stack, static recompilation is almost not doable because of it's equivalent of halting problem, but dynamic recompilation is something like you go and compile few the code that you already interpret interpret interpreted, and you compile that to the point of a jump, like a, a branch in the code. So if you found that if your code will be compiled to there, and when it back, get back, so it needs to be re executed, it's already compiled, so it's much, much faster. Of course, for 
emulating uh, a Game Boy in a modern machine like ours, we don't need to to get too worried about <coughs> this. At least for as far for image uh, for doing the display and so maybe about the sound I don't know but I don't think that we need to do dynamic recompilation here uh, this is most I found that for example Moopin 64 which is a 64 Nintendo 64 emulator use this dynamic recompilation so this is probably needed for those higher or newer <coughs> games video games so, but this is this is a good, very good, nice, very good answer, which explain a lot about the concepts, basic concepts, and and it's a very good starting point for doing emulator. <laughs> At least this is my, this is where I I come from. <laughs> this is my first when I just Google about emulator. I come up with this as an answer and then starting my research. Uh, <clears throat> so let's continue reading these. So they have this motivation was rather abstract, the meaning purpose of this project to cut yourselves. Like my motivation as well. So I'm doing this for educate myself and maybe helping others with the same path. <coughs> But what can emulate to be used for digital is a website. Blah, blah. Yeah, you can all you can display all the emulate all the By making emulate and documenting how it works, it will be possible to trust the sources to understand how the technology works. It also matters of companies. Well, our, our ancestors. <laughs> it's also a matter of convenience. Emulation of preserved technology can be used. Easily. Yeah. One, part, well, one another motivation for doing this, I would say that. Learning this stuff, for example, I, I'm, I have background in, I, I actually not have a academic formal in programming in computer science. I came from more technical, so then I learned myself programming, and I working in IT for most like 20 years, 30, 20 years now. But well, it almost in high level programming languages. So even C, and I didn't touch C or C plus plus before. So assembly was always my, like a something that scared me. Not scared, but you know, we don't need to deal with that. But doing this this project, I need to learn. I really need to learn because. We, we what we are actually doing here it's building a compiler or inter interpreter of assembly language so <coughs> like I said this is mostly from a, a Z80 processor so we are simulate we are emulating <laughs> this is the word what this uh, processor does so this is a very good way to learn how actually a computer architecture works. So, um, understanding how those instruction set works and how those fits inside the memory. Of course, we are talking about Game Boy, but any other computer uses the same abstractions, like let's say. So, from 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 the point that I started researching on this, I, I already learned a lot. This is my f the first up episode of this uh, streaming. 
but I think I will learn a lot and that should be good that should that will make me make fun well let's do this uh, what's a Game Boy? the international Game Boy line the first Game Boy was internal the, 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 the image dot matrix game dot matrix game because it said that the, 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 the printed circuit boards the Game Boy is equipped with a CPU clock and a monochrome see this 8 bit CPU clock at 4 MHz and a monochrome <coughs> 4 ton LCD display yeah it's 4 shades of grey <laughs> something like that well, how can I get back to there in this case is oh thank you urge Thu for the following <laughs> you are the first following thank you man or madam I don't know from the Nick but thank you appreciate that so uh, So the the oh, wow. sorry. So <coughs> it's have a, f a four ton LCD display. Instead of a game on the device, like you would on a personal computer, the games come in external renewable cartridge or game data, including uh, including. Save it progress is stored in the cartridge. This is nice. The save it pr save it progress is stored in cartridge itself. <coughs> the cartridge consists of a vol volatile and no volatile memory. The game data is stored in the volatile game memory, non volatile or the ROM, as read only, while the save game is stored in the battery powered volatile memory, some kind of RAM. This is due to the fact that the flash memory is too expensive at that time. Yeah, this choice of memory also means that the cartridges effectively span the run ROM bank of Game Boy. Oh yeah. So, yeah, <coughs> when the cartridge, uh, what I already learned is that, that when you put the cartridge, the first thing is to move the ROM to the RAM of Game Boy, but it's also keep uh, exchanging the run with the ROM for because I think it will be explained here but we have a lot of division in the memory I think it will be let like here somewhere somehow let me see Boot room. Oh, well, here. So here is the memory. If you see, we have like a thirty-two kilobytes of ROM. For in the in the in the Game Boy Run, only thirty-two kilobytes is is destined to ROM or the game itself. But if you see from the <coughs> ROM files, you see like Tetris is 32, but even Mario Brothers is 64. So how they do that? It's this part of the memory is switchable. So it it I will I will learn from the from this document. But this this part is switchable. So when it's not reading something from this part, it's getting from it it reads from the cartridge again. Uh, yeah, it's switch man, bro. And there are a lot of special stuff here in the memory. Yeah, but let's let's get back to beginning. I think I really, really like this document because it's very 
like academic so it will be good to read it's like a paper so terminologies in some computer architectures and paradigms is different types of business for bit switching and intergnotation these tables will show the expressions used in this paper for this bit switch we adopted the terms used in zlog Z80 reference manual set switch to logic tree reset switch to logic files and test reading the state of a bit. Okay, just setting some. Okay, for integral notation, we use typical mathematical notation for equation and Python notation for code. So x will be okay, mathematical, mathematical, decimal, and binary. Okay, 0b. I think. I think you rust. Um, rust. No. Rust. No. Rust numeric notations. Literal and operators. Okay. Here's my example. Yeah. So this is a short, this is an or, a bitwise or, bitwise, bitwise, no oh sorry, bitwise or, and bitwise or, bitwise short. This is how to represent binary in U232. Integral scan not only this first x model octal binary notation zero x so zero x or zero b so it's the same zero x zero b okay <coughs> so it's the same notation mm. Simulation is a limitation of software or hardware which gives you the ability to use a product even if you don't have the product. <laughs> Emulation has an limited real product as much as possible and even application as emulated is distinguished from a simulator by the ability to replace the original product completely. The focus of simulator is to replicate the condition of on a situation. Then for simulator is the Apple iOS simulator which it can simulate the condition of the app but building the application for a modern X you know, can be run on desktop this is from an emulator which would have uh, reused the binary M code and try to emulate the hardware specification of the phone but since the desktop CPU is much faster you know. ok they Say something about simulator and okay. Architecture and Nintendo for the potential screaming the details and um, especially figure four. Okay, shows the integration and connection between CPU, RAM, cartridge, and display. Which inspiration from this we will make classes in Python for each of these components. This will set up the foundation for our guest system. Or a host system running Python. This is set up definition. Okay, this guest system will be the virtual Game Boy hardware, theoretically capable of running every existing piece of software writing for the Game Boy. So what he says that he will create like classes to represent parts of this structure. It and this is come from the architecture from Game Boy patent by Nintendo. Hmm. Interesting. Well, of course there will not be classes for DC DC converter and battery and so on, but probably 
or you need a CPU core, one for the display, for all the workaround. Of course, this is all part of memory. It will be in in the our memory structure, and we have we have this in as a struct in in Rust. Let me show you one thing from the code. So, at the beginning of this video, I, I told you that one of my inspirations was the ship 8 code built by this guy called Alexander Iru. And <coughs> He did the same. He emulates a CPU. Uh, oh, let me open. Increase the size of the font here. Okay. Mm, CPU. So we have this CPU struct which has these registers. Uh, the CPU eight has sixteen registers. Registers. The product program counter, the stack, and I think these two are something that he built to help. Yeah, so we will probably do the same. And he did like a bus, which has the run, and he's the sprites. So we will probably be doing the same. Here you have the structure to represent the screen. You have the structure to represent the screen as a 64 for 32 bit, bit uh, pixels. So <coughs> this is for ship 8. This is made by uh, the guy that I said before. Uh, uh, let, let, let me go to his. Here, Alex N. So this is a very good uh, stuff to to read. I, I I watch his series, and from he what what he made his with this chip eight, it's very good. And I like I said, this is the his code. I'm so when this guy says that they will build in Python. Using classes in in Rust, you are gonna use structs. Okay. Okay. So <coughs> let's continue. Hmm. 
So the, the, in the the way is doing this, uh, interconnection the real Game Boy runs all of the hardware in parallel and synchronized through interrupting CPU. The interrupts works has oh it's talking about interconnection and interrupts. Interrupts work as an unidirectional message between the hardware parts. The LCD controller might trigger the V-blank interrupt to make the CPU to amp updating routine, but the CPU can enable and disable interrupts if it's inconvenient to the programmer. In our software we have a motherboard motherboard class as the first step inside the guest system. This class will instantiate every other component of the game by like CPU run so there is CPU run cartridge display like this, but there will be a motherboard which will like do. Well, I don't know if I we go through this way, but <coughs> then good idea. These will all be covered in the in the following sections. This structure has a strict hierarchy, finds count functions and access elements of children by disallowing children to make calls to their parents. We keep the code less entangled and thereby easier to read. Okay. Let me see one thing here. Okay. Implement implementation. As the Game Boy has a 8-bit processor and a modern computer has 32-bit or 64-bit processor, we had to figure out a way to support different architectures. Python doesn't support storing a single byte in a variable like the C type char. Oh. Our first approach will have a 80 bit class with a constructor in a set function to make with the, to make sure we didn't need to use more than 8 bit. Just prod proved to be incredibly slow and had to be optimized, which we will be described in greater detail in the performance section. Mm, now, yeah, they are using Python so. Our second approach, which proved to keep the time boundaries, was to use a normal integers instead. This means that a 6-bit system, every byte would take up to 8 times as much memory, and every operation that could possibly overflow in 9-bit We have to mask out excessive bits. This choice would not be optimal if you are expecting to run them later on constrained hardware. We chose to predict speed and correctness of the CPU and let it use extra memory. Yeah, so he is using uh, uh, Python and is storing it uh, integer in Python, and it, it's used because it I think it's like U size. It's the size of integer of the CPU. So it's. If it's running 64, it's 64 bits. So it's but it, if it keep using only 8 bits for it, integer, it have no problem. But sometimes the overflow will happen. But in Rust, we don't have this problem because we have the U size and U8, which is precise, 8 bits. Okay, partial conclusion. The initial structure is to organize the programming with class, which <coughs> where a class represents in the real counterpart. This will yield a more natural flow in the code and keep a logic separation of the class. It will be possible to make a single class program, but it will lose readability and become artificial. Okay. Uh, having a 32 bits. Uh, you cause a memory penalty on the Rust system when emulating an 8 bit processor. To form an overview of the emulation, see a pain in the. Oh, 
and now I I finally understand what it means. Of course, the guest system is the Python code. The host system is the computer. So yeah, the Python code is the emulator guest system. So the host system, well, yeah, of course. If you, if your, if your, uh, if our processor that we are simulating, instead of using 8-bit, using 32 or 64, because they need to, <coughs> it will not lose, it will not be an 8-bit processor, but a 64, so it could not run in Python. Mm, in a processor in a lower hardware to form an overview of emulation see appendix A where there is a class map covering the architecture include display direction around the sim and the simulations will be explained in the following session appendix A let's see hmm. calls shape host system Oh. oh, now it's more clear. The host system is where it's been, like a window glut. I think window glut is something. Uh, OpenGL. It's for drawing. So yeah, of course we need to <laughs> use some library to do I think for Rust for doing the display I use the same as Alexander did here which is the mini from buffer let me go to the cargo yeah mini FB mini is a small cross platform we will to create and draw pixels so yeah I will use this <coughs> oh, I think I will let's see if this is possible oh <coughs> there is one more stuff that's good <coughs> uh, here we have this From that guy, from this guy, from this guy, from this Ryan oh boy, he has a very good but unfinished. Mm. Yeah, it has this. <laughs> so he has this DMG. How to emulate the Game Boy DMG guide for, and this is right in Rust. Oh. But it's not a completely guide. If you really want to know how particular computers are, there is no better way to learn. But Just a minute. I need to pause this stream. I'll be back. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah. So we are back again. Uh, sorry about that. <coughs> so let's get back to reading. I have more <coughs> thirty minutes. 
So uh, well, I was talking about this how to emulate the Game Boy from this guy by Rust and it's very nice but it's uh, incomplete. I have a random hmm. Yeah, so I think I think I go through that other at least in during this streaming it's more make more sense uh, yeah. so <coughs> Let's get back to the PyBoy documentation. So yeah, we already saw the map class. Let's see how they go from there. So yeah. Okay, so now they will start to talk about the CPU. CPU of Game Boy is single cycle, meaning it has no pipeline. No pipeline, what that means. Wow. I think it's something that I need to understand to learn. But okay, so it's it says that it's single cycle. Single cycle. Let's check out the single cycle. Oh, this is a CPU single cycle. Mm. Yeah, so single cycle because in never cycle it is execute only one instruction. But actually, <coughs> it's execute the instruction. It's uh, actually it fetches the instruction. It execute and start the results back to the memory. So all that happens in one cycle. And this is all how why they not has no pipeline. Okay. Like modern consoles and personal computers, the Game Boy has only one processor. The Game Boy has primitive sprite engine which offloads the CPU. The CPU still has to move the low uh, to to move and load background elements. 
from the memory to designate 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 video memory <coughs> okay so sharp lr 35902 is the cpu for game boy cpu of game boy was derived from zlog za but was modified to only include some parts of ZA. The CPU of the Game Boy was officially named LR3590. It's produced by Sharp. The specification and the few registers then ZLog Z8. Mm -hmm. The has some users in turn. Okay, so it's a mix between Zilog Z80 and 880. The LR3590 and Z8 both use the same instruction set from year 1974. The Z8 has a 8-bit opcode length, allowing a instruction set of 260, 460, I think it's 200, 256, not 5-6 opcodes. But by executing a special prefix instruction called opcode prefix, the CPU will use a different lookup table for the next opcode. When the prefix set of code has been executed, it will revert back to the main code. There. So it's like saying this that <coughs> this prefix C B yeah this becomes this. So it's not only two hundred five 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 but there's a bunch more and this <coughs> prefix is used for rotation and shifts so the Game Boy LR35902 is a hybrid of Intel 88 and Zilog Z80 in the sense of that include all the features from Intel 88, but also some of features of Zlog. The Intel also it also carries a resemble to the modern first century successor successors. Uh, Define the initial instruction set for us. Uh, okay, so the 88 is the ancestors of 886, which is the initial instruction set of the current x86. Great. That's great. So, <coughs> some of the instructions that Game Boy does probably is still in our current processors. The opcode Z8 in a variable in length and are determined by the byte length of opcode parameters. This means that unlike the MIPS architecture, you can't do random lookups in the program code without a no entry point. Okay. I don't know too much about MIPS, MIPS architecture, <coughs> but yeah, we need to go through byte length. Okay. So now the opcodes. The opcodes are constructions as seen in figure, figure. Okay, the dash dash lines are mandatory. Okay, this two. The prefix is used to switch to other lookup tables. The LR35, so the LR35 only supports one prefix. CB prefix derived from the hexadecimal value of the code. Okay, where is our. here. So here, no. 
go here. It's saying that let me just The instruction set 8 bit 8 h bit 8 bits 8 bits 8 bits 8 bits hmm. the cb instruction set of uh, includes operation rotate swap and bitwise test set and reset is the the z8 has four additional instruction set for negations and extra load functions. The main instruction set includes arithmetic functions, jumps, calls, tech, push pop, and control. The opcode can have an immediate appended after it. The length of the immediate appended oh, can have. It's predetermined by the opcode and can be 8 or 16 bits. Oh. In general, the CPU only supports unsigned integers, with the only exceptions being rel relative uh, jumps and two stack pointer operations. <laughs> the signed data is formatted to complement have to be through to defend the sphere since every other so set. Mediates big engine which must be taken into consideration when giving hmm. the 16. Well, I think big engine is it's that big engine. It's exactly like what we saw is that the most significant is yeah, is the most significant. So <coughs> that's why that That's why that this instruction it's zero two. Yeah, it's zero two. 028B because of this big Indian stuff. Big big Indian. I think it's how that pronunciate that. Big big Indian from ending. I think so. Hopefully. Okay. <coughs> Interesting. Uh, oops. Okay, so, so I'm talking about registers, registers, registers. Some registers of Z80 has been omitted and has an alternate register set. The addition to the main register set, which 
is a general purpose registers. The alternate registers is no different from the main registers, but make it possible for fast context switch by swapping the register step. Besides the eight general purpose registers, registers, four special purpose registers have been omitted. The four registers that were used for index, address, address, indexing, memory refresh, and delivery calls point to hook. Okay. So it's saying that some of them are not implemented. The registering they are arranged of the clear. Okay, so bit fifteen and eight. So A, B, C some flags. This is special for addresses. Uh, okay and Program counter and stack point to pointer, as I said before, are 60 bit, 60 bit, 16 bit uh, registers. General purpose registers or those eight before. Other general purpose are eight bits each, but single row can combine it into 16 bit registers. So BC, DE, and HR, HL. This is typically used when addressing data from memory since the memory addresses are 16 bit. So yeah, I saw a lot of people talking about HL and some instruction set <coughs> that use HL to say where to jump in the memory because the, the memory addresses are 16 bit. The register are general purpose, but each register still serves as a specific purpose. The A register is commonly used for accumulating numbers and and as an argument for calls. This due to the fact that most 8-bit arithmetic and logical instructions save the resulting register A. Okay, it's a accumulator. Eight of one hundred for arithmetic logical and you wanna know instruction in the main instruction use register A. So most of them users use register register A. The register the F register is a bit special which we'll get back at to the end moment. Okay, this is the flag one that we saw already. Register B, C, and D are can be used for anything and doesn't carry any special properties. Register H and L are a bit special too, since they are often combined with HL, which is needed for indirect access memory. Indirect access memory is lower and take eight to twelve cycles, where the same instruction take four cycles on a register. Mm. I think these cycles are that because four cycles because this run is one megahertz and the CPU is four megahertz so normally it takes four cycle but sometimes it takes eight or twelve cycles so three two and three <coughs> special registers take point Stack pointer and program counter are self explanatory The stack pointer points to the next unused space of stack, and program counter points to the next instruction. Be okay, okay, stack. It's just a stack in program counter. Back to F register. The address can be used for oper as an operand for arithmetic logical units and operations because the register is reserved for. Allow you a sorry, for ALU flags. The ALU flag can set flag. Okay, there are those flags that are it's a match <coughs> results in zeros. Use that subtraction, raise it half carry or raise it carry. The flags span from a from the eight bit to the fifty. 
so the first four. The lower nibble, nibble, yeah, the nibble is like four bits. Nibble is always zero. These flags can be used to check a condition between before jumping and the handling carry caused by arithmetic operations. Nice. Yeah, as I said, this F is used, is used for conditional jumping. Or ifs. Okay, so <coughs> operation. Arithmetic logical unit. The LR35902 can't handle overflow, but it's carry. It has a carry instead. The carry flag can be set when an integer overflows, among other things. Consider the case where I register A and B which with the carries. Oh, okay, because it's only <coughs> 8 bits, so it could not handle this sum. So, by taking model, Mm. So we start 194 and put the care carry bit. Okay. Yeah, because it goes to to think to sixty to five two hundred fifty six. So if go to hundred fifty seven, it will increment the carry bit. So you know that you overflow and you can jump to the other if you are counting to the, this. Okay, <laughs> those would make it, it skip the jump and break the loop. This case show the carry use it as borrow from an overflow operation, but the carry is more than that. The carry flag is also used by rotate functions, where it is used as an extra bit or as a duplicate of the rotate bit. One of cases the rotate right circular operation. With the operation the first bit with this operation the first bit is copied to carry. Mm -hmm. The eight bits mean one in the other. Okay, so this go. Okay, it's rotating to here. So Okay, this is the rotate right circular operation. Right, 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 right. Load data there. LR35 supports. Okay, guys, I think, yeah, it's almost time now. I will 
probably go through this document later today tomorrow you have something more nice to show or like a plan on how to build this stuff maybe I put all this stuff in a presentation yeah so I will be uploading this video too yeah guys I will be uploading this video to my YouTube channel I will <laughs> put the YouTube channel in the description of here and tomorrow at the same time I will be at 6 30 p.m. Eastern time I'll be here to 8 30 8 something like that okay so that's it I will stop here because you already achieved some results here so this is my very first streaming I I'm still learning how to present this how to go through this documentation how to learn in the same time that I'm trying to present something so yeah but today was good yeah thank you see you tomorrow in the next episode